Dear students, in this module, we're going to look at the in silico fragmentation comparison and how it can help us in identifying proteins from the mass spectrometry data. As you know, in MS1, we measure the intact mass of the molecule that is there in your sample. The molecule can be a peptide or a protein depending upon top-down proteomics approach or bottom-up proteomics. So, once you have measured the molecular weight of the intact molecule, then you measure this molecular weight with the molecular weights of all the proteins in the protein database. And those proteins that match this molecular weight, you call them the candidate proteins and you take them out. However, if you do not have a single candidate protein, but you get a long list of proteins that are similar in mass, to the mass measured in the experiment, then what do you do? So you move on to something that is called MS2. In MS2, what you do is you fragment the intact molecule and then you have the fragments molecular weights. So given this list of MS2 fragment molecular weights, then you can compare each of these peaks that is reported with the molecular weights of amino acids and see if there are some consecutive peaks that are reported in the experiment. We call them the peptide sequence tags and peptide sequence tags for the small subsets of protein sequences, maybe three amino acid long or four amino acid long or five, depending upon the PST. Then you compare them with the proteins in the database. So each PST reported in the experiment is compared with the sequence of all the proteins in the protein database. So the proteins that report this PST are then selected. But what if you are still not sure which protein is it there in the sample? Then there is a third step. So in that step, what you uh, want to do is you take the MS2 spectrum, the entire peak list, and you take one protein from the database at a time and you create the theoretical spectrum from it. Of course, if you know which technique you are going to use to fragment this protein from the database, then you can calculate the possible fragment ion masses. And of course, once you have done that, you can move on to comparing these fragments. We call them the in silico fragments with the in vitro or experimental fragments. As I just said, given that in your experiment, you know which technique was employed to fragment the protein for MS2, you use the same technique to fragment the protein in the database. So therefore, you will end up with ions depending upon the fragmentation technique. So if you know the fragmentation technique, that is, for example, ECD, then you know that you will end up with C and Z ions for each protein in the protein database. The next step is to compare these fragments. Let's take a look at an example. For obtaining all possible theoretical fragments, the first step that you need to do is you need to take one protein from the database at a time and fragment it. Next, you consider a random, of course, protein from the database and you write it like this. The fragmentation will result in, assuming we are using E, C, D, then only C and Z ions will be reported. So since the length of this entire protein is 10 amino acids, the first fragmentation that is shown here is going to give you C1 and Z10. Similarly, the next fragmentation will give you a C2 and a Z9 ion. Next, if you fragment this protein again, it will give you a C3 and a Z8 ion. So if you know this amino acid sequence that is the C3 ion 
or if you know this amino acid sequence that is the Z8 ion then you can compute their molecular weights. So in this way you can arrive at theoretical masses for the fragments. So in conclusion you just have to compare your MS2 data from the experiment with these theoretically calculated peptide masses. Once you have made all of them then you can simply count how many fragments that were there in the experiment match with each protein's fragments from the database and you can say safely that the more the compared fragments the closer the protein that is from the database is to your sample.